to you, this is Mike from Asymmetrical Preparedness. Today I want to talk about prepper priorities and just priorities in general in life. Um, just trying to, I'm hoping to uh, encourage you guys to have your priorities in order um, and to truly do what's important in life and what will make you happy. Um, and I'm here to tell you, other than preps, of course, because preps are peace of mind. Other than preps, things will make you happy. Um, just saying, you know, the big, the fancy new car, the big jacked up truck with the fancy wheels and mud tires and, you know, all that stuff, it won't make you happy. And just think about it and reassess you know, vehicles in particular. Why do you have the vehicles you have? What are you? What have you spent money on them for? And what are you actually accomplishing with that? Like for a truck, for example, because I'm a truck guy. Do you use your truck lifted? Do you have big mud tires on it? Then think about: Do you ever, ever go off road? Do you ever need those? Or is it just cool? You know, hey, if that's your thing, go for it. I'm just trying to encourage you to think about things in life and, you know, how important is it to you to look cool versus putting that money into preps. I'll tell you what, you know, a lift on a truck nowadays, you know, anywhere from 1000 to $4,000. And then... Wheels and tires, holy cow, yeah, that's, uh, I mean, anywhere from, you know, that's another probably at least four or $5,000. You're talking almost $10,000 for a lift, wheels and tires, just to make your truck look cool. I'll tell you what, I have a Super Duty. I, you know, pretty lucky because it fits pretty big tires on it already. Um, so I leveled the front, you know, two-inch level kit cost $75 and then I threw in I threw in 35 inch mudders um, but I'll tell you why I put on mud terrain tires and big tires because my bug out location is extremely remote um, and you need them and sometimes a year the all four wheel the big heavy duty trucker chain you know the big chains snow chains and I've been four-wheeling um, for a lot of my life. I was big into four-wheeling, and you know I have had well, early Broncos. I've had Jeep uh, Grand Cherokees. I've had you know a bunch of different uh, different vehicles that I've four-wheeled and built hardcore and sunk a lot of money into to go four-wheeling. And uh, don't have any of them now. Wish I still did, since I already put the money into some of them because those are pretty sweet bug out vehicles but uh, you know just uh, um, I have a lot of experience four wheeling it takes all my experience and those mud tires to even get to my bug out location sometimes depending on the time of year whether it's rain and you know you got mud down the hill you got lots of snow whatever it is so that to me was a necessity does it look cool? yeah it does look cool but you know uh, I got an awesome deal on the tires, and they're on stock wheels, so I didn't buy wheels and tires. Um, so, yeah, think of some ways like that. If you need something, what's the bare minimum? Could I put really cool wheels on there? Yeah, would the truck look sweet? Yeah, it would look sweet, but it looks pretty darn cool like, like it is. And, like I said, necessity. What do you need? Um, so... Um, another thing, like, you know, the fancy car. What's it really getting you? Is it a status symbol? You know, fast cars. I love fast cars. I mean, I built a uh, LS1 Camaro. Holy cow. I mean, it was a nine and a half second drag car. And I drag raced for a lot of years also. Um, all around the, the Pacific Northwest. And it was a blast. It was a rush. But man, I sunk, I put $20,000 
into the car on top of the price of the car. Sweet, it was a nice car. But now I look back, <laughs> I'm like, man, wouldn't I wish I had that 20 grand back? So think about your priorities. Uh, let me adjust the camera a little bit. It wasn't really even. Hopefully that's level for you guys. Um, you know, I've made some bad choices in my life. You know, I look back a lot of, I used to have like a crap load of guns. Um, I went, when I first got into guns, I went cheap. Quantity versus quality. Now I have quality versus quantity. Um, but, man, I wish I had some of those back. Um, just a little story. I had a Smith & Wesson Model 629 Classic Power Port. 44 Magnum revolver. You know, I'm talking about the stainless nickel plate, whatever they are. You know, I'm talking about the stainless steel looking ones with a six and three quarter inch barrel, the full underlug, the port on the end of the barrel in front, in front of the sight, on the, you know, on the muzzle end of the sight. And I had special sights on it for um, long range silhouette shooting. You should shoot that sucker out to was it 300 yards I think it was yeah because I had a 100 yard inlay on the side on the front side I had a 200 yard and a 300 yard inlay on the front side which were my zeros for that and it would man that gun with hand loads could be accurate at that distance um, and you know back when I got it I mean I don't know what it was mid 90s early 90s I don't know no it had to be mid to late 90s revolvers were not that expensive. Semi-autos were expensive. Nowadays, completely <laughs> reverse. Gosh, I don't know how much that gun to go for now. I know to get a gun like that, brand new, they're talking eight, nine hundred dollars. Like, oh my gosh, I think I probably paid four or five hundred for that gun. Brand new. Had a gorgeous trigger, just amazing single action tri trigger. Oh my gosh, that gun was awesome, and I regret getting rid of that. As well as out of Les Bear 1911-45, and, and there was the premiere. It was talking about before he started hiring all these people and making the different grades of his guns and all these different things. It was actually built by him, and I used to compete in uh, USPSA and IPSC matches, um, you know, practical pistol matches with it. And who, yeah, nice gun, single stacks. It's really hard to compete against all the guys with big, the high round count, double mags, double mag or double stack mags. But man, that gun was nice. Don't have that anymore either. I think both those guns I traded for car parts for that stupid Camaro that I built and drag raced. Now, did I enjoy it? Sure. But I tell you what, it sat more than it ran. You know, as far as working on it. And, and building up new iterations of the engine, stuff like that. So, just trying to encourage you guys. I'm sure you guys have made some mistakes. I'm trying to encourage you not to make the same mistakes I did. You know, am I doing well now? Have I recovered? Am I going on? Am I moving forward? Sure, of course I am. You know, but we all learn from our mistakes, right? Watch this good video yesterday. It was funny about uh, the America I grew up in. It was a comedy. Um, skit, or not skit, it was a comedy routine, I forget who it was by, but he was talking about, you know, all the things, all the dumb things we used to do, how, you know, all of the playgrounds aren't even fun anymore, you know, the slides are super short and made of plastic, and you like, there's, you scoot down them instead of actually slide down them, slides used to be fun, you used to go fast, you know, and monkey bars and all these different things, you got hurt on them, <laughs> You just learn not to do that, or you got stronger, or you learn to do it better. Nowadays, we just protect everybody from themselves. You know, nobody learns. Uh, he was joking about, the guy was joking about uh, his grandson, you know, his daughter brought his, gra his grandson over, and he was he was going out to rollerblade, and he's like, man, I thought he was going to go dis disarm a nuclear device, because he had, like, so much protective equipment on, and his mom said, oh, I don't want him to get hurt, and he's like, you know what? It's like, pavement hurts. He's like, whenever you fall down, you hit the pavement. That's incentive to not do it again, to get better. And it's just like, we're so protected nowadays. And sorry, this is a side rant. It's just, you know, I do. I miss the, you know, my childhood. But back before all the stupid computer games and crap. You know, back when kids played outside all day long. 
You know, I encourage you, hey, get your kids out. Let them play outside. Go outside with them. Um, so this is just kind of a random, you know, hopefully thought-provoking, motivating talk. So, yeah, priorities. You know, do you need that expensive dinner out? Or can you put the money towards your preps? Uh, do you need to buy that brand new car every couple years? Or can you just make the one you have last? Um, and put that money towards preps. Uh, you know, make it a lifestyle. Uh, you know, brand new cell phone all the time, smart TVs, all this fancy electronics crap. Where does it get you? But having to feel like you need to buy the next new one that comes out and, you know, putting yourself in further debt for it or, you know, spending all your money just living paycheck to paycheck because you have to have all these things. You have to have the fancy all you know, all the fancy things then just think about what does it actually get you what how much enjoyment or what is it doing for you or, or what are you getting out of it is it really worth it or can you change your lifestyle in some small ways to, that won't you know, still enjoy life you know still have fun still enjoy your vehicle and still enjoy all the things but just uh, maybe back off, downsize, don't get new things as often, you know, so you can have a little more of your income, disposable income, to use toward preparedness. You'll have a much better peace of mind. You'll feel way better. You'll be more at ease. You'll probably, I'm sure you'll be happier, you know, when you look at your food storage and you know, hey, I'm, we're good to go no matter what happens you know if you just have all these things and all these high payments and everything and then say you lose your job you get laid off you get fired whatever happens what happens then you're stuck with a I don't know I don't even know how much people make for car payments nowadays seven eight hundred dollars a month I mean that's ludicrous <laughs> get yourself debt free first off you know, don't have a car payment. Pay cash for your vehicles. Have emergency funds. Cash and prepping emergency funds, which prepping is an emergency fund. Um, just think of little ways. Don't go out and get the pizza. Uh, instead of going to a fancy pizza or a pizza joint, go to Costco and get a $9 large pizza that's good. Seriously. We had training the other day at my work, and we ordered. Uh, we have training once a month. We usually order pizza or something like that to eat while we're uh, uh, while we're doing our training, while we're covering our topics. So we ordered eight of the large pizzas from Costco, baked and everything like that. All I had to do was swing by there, pick them up, bring them to work, and it was seventy-six dollars for eight large pizzas. All the grown men in my office gorged ourselves on pizza for two days before the pizza ran out. And I'm talking three shifts. I'm talking day shift guys. I'm talking uh, swing shift guys like me and grave shift guys. Working round the clock, office fully, fully manned, uh, military and civilian. And, uh, you know, with anywhere from 12 to three guys in the office at all times. So come on, you know, $10, $20, and actually not even $20, like $18 worth of pizza instead of 40, 50, 60. You know, you can still have the things, just think about where you can, you know, cut corners, where you can skimp, where you can put money aside for food storage. Um, I know this isn't rocket science and I'm not putting anything out new. I'm just hoping to get through to you guys. Have you think, analyze where you spend your money, where your money goes. Write up a budget. That's one of the best things you can do. See where your money goes. And is it worth it to you for them, for your money to be going there? Um, there's so many ways to cut corners. Um, so I just want to encourage you guys. And have you guys think about that. I know this isn't that great of a video. But it's just... I, I'm trying to get you guys. I want to encourage you guys. And hopefully get through to you to use your brain thought process analytical thinking all right 
I want to get the juices flowing. Like I said, I'm not throwing out anything amazing and new information, okay? I really want to encourage you guys to get your thought process going. I encourage you guys to think and to be continually um, bettering yourselves. So, um, yeah, so remember, perfection is the goal, excellence is expected, and failure is not an option. And if you like my videos, please subscribe, hit that like button, share the videos, you know, do the things, guys and gals. I love you guys, and I'm having a lot of fun. I really appreciate everybody that's here. Appreciate all your comments and all the time you take out of your day to spend with me here and watching my videos. So, blessings to you and yours.